cross, pray. Oh God, who constantly brings up in your church new examples of virtue, grant that we may follow so closely in the footsteps of the Bishop St. Alphonsus in his zeal for souls as to attain the same rewards that are his in heaven. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set in a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all these things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, thank you all so much for coming. And if I give thanks <clears throat> to God for anything in terms of my pewter jubilee, I give thanks for the wonderful graces that God has given us over the years in terms of priestly vocations. That has been my top priority from the beginning, and I was so grateful for Mary Euler's work in that small addendum to the Catholic Herald, especially wherein she pictured the almost 40 men that I've been privileged to ordain since I'm here. That picture stirs me at the deepest level, and I'm grateful to God every day for so many things. His goodness to me is like a thunderous waterfall falling down on me every day. And all I have to do is stand there and catch some of the water. So that's pretty easy, as long as you don't mind getting wet. But I'm grateful, really, for so many things. Above all, for that. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the pro-life movement in the Diocese of Madison. I'm so grateful to the Knights and Ladies of the Holy Sepulchre for all that they do, not just for being here today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you especially for what you do to help in the help the church and the Holy Land. And of course, I'm deeply grateful to the Knights of Columbus and all that they do, represented today by Ron Faust. Thank you, Ron, for coming, and thank the Knights for me, as they know my gratitude, for the many wonderful, wonderful things that they do. Thanks to these great seminarians who are here to warm my heart. They represent a mighty number. Thanks to Father Garrett and Father Chad who were here, nicely gussied up. Thank you. Thank you, Father Rick, especially for not only your hospitality here, but thank you for interrupting your vacation to be with me at this moment. I'm very grateful for that, but I don't want to hold you up as you return 
to your vacation because that vacation is certainly well deserved. Thanks so much to the servers who always do a wonderful job here today. I hope that eventually most of you will be sitting there like the seminarians sooner or later. Thanks to Aristotle and thanks so much to those who sing how beautiful our worship is today. When I think of pro-life, of course I think of babies in the womb. And we can't be too concerned about them. We seem to be making some progress, but that progress can always turn out to be fleeting unless we really keep our noses to the grindstone and don't back away. Thank you to all who are here who do so much in the cause of pro-life. I'm especially happy to see Steve Carlin, who is becoming a worldwide ambassador for life, and I'm so proud of him and his ministry, and I'm very grateful for the many sacrifices that he and his family make. I am thrilled to see some sisters of Mary Morningstar here who make us all feel holier and remind us that we don't deserve to feel as holy as we do. But they offer a wonderful witness in the diocese of contemplative prayer and also youthful spiritual energy. And I thank the sisters so much for that. When my thoughts turn to pro-life, I suppose most of all, I'm grateful to the Lord for the gift of the life of Christ in the diocese the seminarians and the priests especially. Every priest is another Christ. And when we support and we love our priests, we support and love Christ. And we should never, ever forget that. Especially in times of darkness and this is my last point for today fittingly in a way right before coming here I received a letter from someone in Wanakee Wanakee not the East Coast Wanakee and she was telling me about her grandson, young man, and what a wonderful priest he might make. But then she said, I would strongly discourage him from going to the seminary because I don't know what's going on there. Making reference, of course, to the former Cardinal McCarrick and his ugly misdeeds. Now, we know from Jesus that we don't have the luxury of hating anybody. So we pray for the former Cardinal McCarrick. But we also condemn what he did in the strongest terms. In the strongest terms. And we condemn the fact that not a few bishops knew what he was up to. And I mean, they knew it. They didn't hear a rumor. They knew it. 
we can never, I mean many bishops, heard it. But when you hear something as a rumor, you don't go public and risk ruining somebody's reputation on the basis of a rumor. I've had that done to me many times in almost 20 years as a bishop. People take a rumor and they have a field day with it. And it's a serious sin to do that, either of detraction or calumny. We know that hearsay evidence is not acceptable as evidence. But there were not a few bishops who knew this as a fact and we have a letter today, a statement from Cardinal Donardo, the president of our conference, saying that the truth will come out about all of that. And I can only hope and pray that that happens. And those bishops who enabled Cardinal McCarrick certainly need to be accountable to the Holy Father, not to forget Almighty God for what they did. But this is no time for us to hate. And it certainly is not a time to tell our grandchildren, don't dare go to the seminary. Can I say that at no seminary is a seminarian being disgustingly propositioned by a predator? Can I swear to that? No. But I know where I send people. And I know that for a variety of reasons, the people that I send are safe. And wouldn't it be a terrible thing for Catholic people to tell their grandchildren, their children, don't go to the seminary. The seminaries are not loaded with predators. Can I swear that there's not a one? I couldn't do that. That's like swearing that there's no original sin in the world. And I can't swear to that because it's false. So this is plain English, dear friends. And you are friends of mine. This is not time for hate. But it is a time for justice. And it is a time for punishment of those who deserve to be punished. And I hope and pray that what Cardinal Donardo says is true, that we will shine light on those who need to be punished, and that that will happen according to those who have the authority who punish them. Thank God, in the Diocese of Madison, every single bishop has never covered up any instance of sexual misconduct by a priest. Bishop O'Connor was military. He had no time for it. Bishop O'Donnell was a canon lawyer. He had no time for it. He followed canon law. Bishop Bullock followed canon law. And I do, thank God. We have no history in this diocese of concealment. So this is the last place where people ought to say, Oh, let's discourage our young men from going to the seminary. We gotta build up what we got. 
and discouraging the young men from going to the seminary is not the way to do it. So we're going to be open, we're going to be honest. People can ask me questions if they want. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. But as we give thanks for the direction in which the Lord has led this diocese for 15 years, using me in many instances, unworthy though I am, as we give thanks, we're hopeful. We're not going to get down on ourselves. We're not going to discourage priestly vocations. We're not going to say they're all that way. We're going to appreciate good priests as the other Christs that they are. And I say that to this kind of a group because you're the ones that can take the lead. And I want you to know that I very much count on you to do so. In the days ahead, please pray for me. Maybe I've been 19 years a bishop, but maybe in five more years I will celebrate my aluminum anniversary <laughs> here in the Diocese of Madison. And as those less-than-precious metals pile up, I will continue to be filled with joy every day. Because my joy comes from the Lord, and not from what some bishop or cardinal does. But we've got to straighten out a mess, and we will. And the real solution are the young priests, like over there, I count Father Heilman and Monsignor Bartella too as young priests. <laughs> I can't count myself as a young bishop anymore. I'm battle-worn, but still full of joy and energy that comes from the Lord. And I will do my very best over the remaining years. I don't look forward to retirement. Don't look forward to it. I don't have a beautiful place in Florida that I've been working on for years. And I just can't wait to get there when I retire. There's no such thing. I don't look forward to it, but it's another stage in life when it comes, it's God's will when it comes. If you're curious, that would be the very beginning of 2022. So I'm not finished yet by a long shot. 2022. And when it comes, if it's possible to use delay tactics to get the resignation accepted, I will use delay tactics better than the Democrats do in Congress. <laughs> so there's my pledge, there's my promise, and there's my joy on this great pewter jubilee. God love you all.
Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, on the 15th anniversary of his installation as Bishop of Madison, and all the clergy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, that they may promote the authentic common good, including the right of the pre-born to life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I hear our prayer. For those who have been scarred by the evil of abortion, that they may find in Jesus Christ and his disciples the source of true compassion and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our The grace to daily renounce Satan and all his works in empty show. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Father, we trust you to hear us and to help us in all the ways that are best for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
prayers may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and good all of His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to enkindle our hearts with the celestial fire of your Spirit, just as you granted the St. Alphonsus to celebrate these mysteries and by them offer himself to you as a holy sacrifice. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Open up your hearts. Amen.
Father's grace to heaven to you, O oh God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and keep of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Thank you. 